Hey people, it's me again. So, anyways, um, it was one of the things that um, it's been talked about periodically when it came to the woke ideology of that sort, you know, and now that we're starting to kind of fight back against the woke in some ways, you know, and especially what was going on and and um Florida as far as that goes, you know. Because one of the latest stories was that Governor Ron DeSantis had pulled a liquor license from one of those nightclubs that had like these drag shows that have kids there. And in some ways I think what is really infuriating again is where the mainstream media is trying to put like a spin on on things to say that you know banning drag queens or all of this sort of stuff when it's really more or less a common sense thing you know do we really want to have kids in these type of shows that could be a bit explicit not really or because it's like the same thing. Do we really want to allow kids into his, into his strip clubs as far as that goes? Or as far as that goes, not really. So why do you kind of go around and make this have a kind of spin on certain things like that? It's just like the whole, you know, the, the so-called don't say gay bill kind of stuff there. But in reality, it's really about, you know, keeping, you know, critical race theory out of public schools and and basically you know having that kind of uh that whole talk about you know the birds and the bees eh, to kids that that are more emotionally mature to handle that kind of talk at that point because of that and it was one of the things that was on the lotus eaters you know podcast you know where they live across the pond you know in one of those cities there you know where they had the same thing you know do we really want to have kids learn about that kind of stuff that way too young no because we they should really be able to learn about that sort of stuff once they're in that age appropriate level of that sort you know which is basically like the pre-teenage teenage kind of years of that sort you know when they're like you know 10 11 and 12 sort of thing yeah as far as that goes because i can remember you know for me we had that that whole you know, talk about the birds and the bees kind of thing like that at school when I was in fifth grade. And if and if I remember correctly, we had to have like permission slips there in the first place, you know. So that was like the thing there. And um, I remember at one point, you know, because I didn't really know about certain terms like that until like I was like in like sixth grade or seventh grade or around that point in time you know when they did when they did have those uh have those talks like that and when it came to to like the whole you know education like that because I, I remember at one point you know, that we had talked about that kind of stuff, like, at least once or twice a year at that point, if I could remember correctly, because it, it was, like, all the way through fifth grade up until, like, like, my sophomore year of high school because it was supposed to be a comprehensive thing of like but it was also in different parts of that sort and in different classes like that 
you know, what if it was the health class or what if it was the par covered in like the science class. Because I remember at one point we had that discussion like in science class of that sort. And in a way, of course, they separated the kids by gender at that point, you know. So it was like for like that family life class or, you know, it was like all of like the fifth grade boys or all the sixth grade boys together, you know. But I think it was the first one, it was just, um, the first time it was like the, the two women teachers did that. But then ever since they, ever since they was in like in school there, that they, that it was a male teacher there because it, it made a lot more sense to have like a male teacher and then one of the bigger reasons was in elementary school at that time was we didn't really have a whole lot of male teachers, you know, because I think we had maybe like one or at least four or five male teachers. I'm not exactly certain, you know, you know, but I remember in sixth grade that the, the one of the sixth grade teachers is a man, you know, and so, in some ways, it was kind of like a bit more, uh, you know, less awkward to talk about certain things like that. And I think, you know, that was like the other stuff there. Yeah. And let's see. I'm trying to think here. Because then, um, around like freshman year, it was like the same thing because it was like we had all of like, the freshman boys in that period, you know, in the science classes, you know, we were all like in like one of the, the male science teachers, you know, where he would, you know, answer questions about that sort of stuff and then, you know, that sort of thing, you know, because it was just one of the other stories of that sort. And then I think it was like the health uh, packing at the time. Part of it had to do with like that. And also part of it was like the, the whole things about like how to stay away from, you know, that sort of stuff. Uh, you, know. you know what I mean? I mean, it did have that sort of thing periodically because it was part of like the D.A.R.E. program and that sort. And then a whole Red Ribbon Week sort of thing. You know what I mean? And so, um, considering all of that, um, but it was just one of the other little things there that they have mentioned at many times over it's kind of like on the one hand it's like if kids don't really have the proper education when it comes to that sort of thing you know and there was also these tests show i mean studies that show like you know the more conservative states have like higher you know, teen pregnancies and stuff like that, you know, because they didn't really had, you know, education on that sort of stuff because of how idiotic some of those people could be. You know what I mean? So, um, but the way I kind of see it is, as I said before, you know, because I think it's like the woke ideology of that sort is like, they're trying to create a generation of kids who are going to be xenophobic of that sort and be homophobic, transphobic as a result of this woke conditioning of that sort. Yeah? You know, once these, once these kids start to develop more critical thinking skills and, and realize, like, how idiotic the woke ideology is you know just as much as like some of these 
Gen Z people are starting to grow out of it in some shape or form. Because look at what I kind of said before about that sort of thing. Because it's happened before. You know. When it came to. Um, the baby boomers. You know. Because they were those kind of crazy little hippies. That pranced around naked. In, in 69 or 70 or something like that. And then end up becoming a corporate lackey in 89. You know. And then hanging a picture of Reagan in the background like that, who at one point, you know, you know, used uh, President Nixon's face as a dartboard. Yeah. So I'm certain it's going to be like the same thing, you know, when it comes to the Gen Z, you know. They're going to eventually end up becoming more conservative down the road. And that's just something that's like the case here. It's just like with the millennials. We're starting to become a little bit more conservative down the road because of, of a lot of other things that... Um, just part of it might be like the, the Clinton... Not the Clinton administration. I mean... What Obama had done at that point and disappointed a lot of millennials and, you know, and this sort of thing here, you know. So I don't know if that's going to really change anything. But I think millennials as a voting block, I don't know if, we're, if that's really like the case, if we're just like, being a little bit more conservative or if it's just simply the Overton window has shifted too far to the left that we're considered conservative by comparison. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, anyways, I guess that's probably it. So, talk to you guys later.